Hello Dreamers, welcome back to my channel for a new fantastic tutorial on dreams. Today I want to talk to you about a system that I would like to add to my projects and it's Motion Blur. But what is Motion Blur? You can find it in various forms, in photos or in videos. As you well know, this tool is already present on Procreate. Here on Dreams it's not yet present as a tool, but I'm sure it would arrive. At that point maybe we could really throw away After Effects. <laughs> I'm joking. Or maybe not. Given the absence of this filter on Dreams at the moment, I wanted to try to create it by hand. Before going forward with today's tutorial, I recommend you go and recover my last video where I talked a little about my growth as an artist. You will find some interesting information about my creative path of what I like about comics to animation to a bit of art history of my beautiful country. The channel is constantly growing and I'm very proud of it. We are almost at 1000 subscribers. For those who are not yet subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, activate the bell, like and comment. For me it's essential to continue this beautiful adventure together with you. Before we move on to Dreams, I want to show you what I mean by Motion Blur. Here we find this filter on Adjustments. I take our little friend here as an example and I'm going to apply the Motion Blur. Here we can increase the blur and by moving the Apple Pencil in different directions decide the angle. Think about a filter like this on Dreams. It would be awesome. This filter is used to give movement to our works here on Procreate. Think of the applications inside an animation. But what exactly happens in Motion Blur? Besides having a blur, we also have a trail effect on the object, where we are going to set it. Here you can see the difference. How to see with the Gaussian Blur, you create a blur that blurs the edges of the object while the motion blur creates a real trail with the object. I think I'm going to overuse the word blur today. <laughs> so we can get an effect like this on Dreams? Well, let's try. There are obviously various types of motion blur, also because there are various types of elements, such as lights. I wanted to create a light trail behind the flame saucer, But first I draw a light around the object as if there was an energy that pushes the ship. I take a very light blue color and with the vector brush I draw a circle. Maybe with a bigger size, otherwise you won't see anything. Ok. I fill it with color move it to the center in the center a little smaller in the center in the center in the ok now I'm going to blur it like this and we got a light an energy around the ship I might want to stretch this light in some points of the animation to create a motion blur effect on it too. To do this, first of all, I duplicate the ship and move it here. The important thing here is that the spaceship is only visible enough because from these two vertices I will have to draw some lines. Always with the same color, first of all, I draw a horizontal line, which will serve as a reference. I bring it to the center of the canvas. Ok, like this. 
And now, on another level, I draw a line that starts from the top vertex of the spaceship and with an angle that goes towards the line in the center. Try to be quite precise, especially here. On the same level, now we can also make a line that starts from the vertex at the bottom, a bit like it was a mirror of the one above. Now that we have our lines in another level with the rectangle tool, let's get to this point, fill and fade like this. The gradient is still a bit short, with the freeform tool I get to this point. Taking the drawn lines as a reference, I select and delete the excess part of the shade. And with the blur filter, I'm going to blur the edges a bit. Ok, like this. At this point I can delete the lines below, this way I have all the layers I will need on Dreams. Now I just have to jump on Dreams, I have already created a project with this blue background a bit of night and a bit of space. I'm going to import the entire project. Hmm, how fast this time? Well, there aren't many elements. <laughs> Let's bring the level to the beginning of the track and I'm going to convert it to tracks. I also resize it a little, ok. And this trail that we drew a little while ago, I can finally move it to this point. Do you understand why I drew it there? We don't need this anymore. Delete. Ok. These are the levels we need and now let's animate them. If you haven't figured it out yet, to add the motion blur I first have to make our ship fly. So now we'll create these animations. The animation will last a few seconds. My intention is to make the ship appear from below and then make it make some movements and then make it fly quickly to the right. With the move and scale tool I add the keyframes second by second, moving and resizing the spaceship. And this is the first animation. Now I add a keyframe at 2 seconds and move the ship here. I want to create some variety of movements, so that the motion blur works better. At 3 seconds I bring it to this position in the foreground. I leave it in this position from 3 to 4 seconds. At 5 seconds I'm going to fix it here and resize it. Then, as I said before it, we'll quickly go off the screen again. We won't be doing camera movements or camera shake in this project for now. We will focus on motion blur. In fact, if you haven't seen it, I recently made a tutorial on camera shake to make your cartoons even more dynamic and beautiful. Now let's expand the move and scale and make the ship's animation more dynamic. The first rotation at 3 tenths of a second. And I will also add rotations at the keyframe second by second. I add another rotation here. Adding some variety to the animations with rotations avoided that problem of a 2D environment where the animation is too flat. My intention is also to add some physics to the movement of the ship as if at each change of direction the engine imparts a force to the object, making it oscillate. Here the important thing is that the rotation that occurs after the first 3 tenths of a second must be opposite to the value of the main keyframes. At this point we have a moment where the spaceship is still in front of us but is still in flight, so let's add a rotation. Here I have to rotate backwards, ok, 
At this point here we do the opposite. And here I rotate in this direction. Once all these movements and rotations are done, the spaceship flies to the right. And vamos! I'm not convinced by movement of some rotations, so I'm going to make some adjustment to make the movement more dynamic. As you know, being able to work independently on the various rotation or movement and scale options, we can create really interesting movement dynamics. Go and see my videos on the flight of the Star Wars ship, I made some really interesting tutorials. I'm not convinced by this point where the ship remains still in front of us either. I want a lighter movement, let's try setting the curve to linear. Mm, let's try to remove this keyframe in the center. The rotation here to the opposite. Ok, that's a little better, but for today I don't want to bore you too much with this. Let's move on to adding the motion blur. To add the motion blur we go inside the main group of the spaceship. Add first a new track, I move it down, I copy the spaceship layer and place it on in the new track. In this new level, first of all, we set some keyframes for each second which corresponds to the moment when the ship stops and changes direction. Then we add the keyframe at 2 seconds, 3 seconds, etc. But why I'm adding these keyframes without moving anything? Now you are about to find out. As I explained to you, Motion blur is a sort of trail of the object that is moving and to add this effect I just have to put a keyframe in the center between the keyframes previously set. And I move the shape in the opposite direction to the movement. Modified the trend curves on ease in and out. Ok. And we do this procedure also between the other keyframes, remembering to move the shape in the opposite direction to the movement. This is the artisanal <laughs> method to create a motion blur that works. Obviously, when the possibility of adding it as a filter on Dreams will arrive, the work will be much faster. We've reached the end, I'll add the last keyframe of motion blur. Ok. Let's do a first test. To make the effect more realistic, I change the blending mode to overlay. And I decrease the opacity to 50%. Ok, now it's starting to work better. Now I add a new track and repeat the operation on another level of the spaceship in order to lengthen the trail that is created. In the movement keyframes then I move the shape farther outwards like this. For all points I move the spaceship away. At this point I leave the shape in place, I don't need the motion blur here, I could add it but the movement is slight. In this final part instead I want the effect to be greater, so I move the shape away a little more. I also add the energy light around the ship and this is the result. 
our handmade motion blur. <laughs> Before moving on to the next effect that we will see today, I go back to the main group and I will also add a lens blur to make the effect even more interesting. In this case too, I put keyframes for every second. As we have seen on Procreate, the image with the motion blur set in addition to creating a trail effect is also blurred. So let's add a blur here too for each movement. So here in the center we set a bit of blur. I use the lens blur because in addition to blurring the image, it makes the lights stand out for a really interesting effect. Maybe too much stand out. <laughs> Repeat the operation where there is movement. Ok, this is the last. Great. Now we do a test. And the motion blur is complete. Now, after having uploaded myself, hmm, do you remember this? I want to add this light trail at the end, when the spaceship disappears to the right. As if the light I placed in the center created a trail behind it. First thing, I move it below, I want it to be behind the ship. I move it farther into the timeline, I need it at this point, at 5 seconds, where the ship starts flying to the right. The trail will have to come out from behind like this. I add a first keyframe with a move and scale exactly at 5 seconds. The trail appears very quickly, so at 3 tenths of a second I set another keyframe. Now, since it has to come out from the back of the spaceship, I'm going to move the anchor point to the right end of the shape. here at this point. Now I can set in the initial keyframe a scaling value on the x-axis of 0. And the trail disappears. And as the spaceship moves, as you can see, it comes out creating a trail. This is a motion blur of light. To make the effect even more dynamic, at this point I'm going to lengthen the trail a little by giving, for example, a value of 5 on X. And I add a keyframe at 6 seconds to reset the effect to 0. And here the final result. Motion blur on the shape of the ship and motion blur on the light that creates a light trail effect. This, as I was telling you, is a somewhat artisanal way to create the motion blur here on Procreate Names. It's an experiment that I wanted to do together with you and that I want to add to this project that I'm carrying forward. There are many different ways to apply this effect in a static drawing. We have to take care of adding it only on one frame, so that the speak so maybe it could be easier. But adding it to an animated sequence in this way can be a little more complicated. But the result is really interesting and will make your projects much more dynamic. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and...